Steve Clark has just announced a big squad for some big games. But the question is, did he get this squad selection right? Welcome back, guys, to Son of Scotland TV. A couple of days after the Scottish Cup final. Big in to get over it. Still can't believe how shite that performance for Hearts was. But hopefully Scotland can make me feel a hell of a lot better over the next couple of weeks by not only qualifying for the World Cup, but also getting off to a good start in the Nations League. So Steve Clark today did make his announcement and I did see that Scott Wright was trending on Twitter, people complaining about Scott Wright not getting in the team. And you've got to be honest, right? Yes, the last couple of games I've seen Scott Wright playing, he's looked no bad, right? He's looked decent. But I mean <laughs> a couple of months ago, if Steve Clark selected Scott Wright for the squad, Steve Clark would have came under fire from like 99% of Scottish fans, right? Scott Wright shouldn't be it shouldn't have been anywhere near the Scotland squad. And I don't think he I don't necessarily think he deserves a call up just because he's had a couple of decent games. Let's be real. Most Rangers fans even think Scott Wright is shit. So why Steve Clark would put him in our team, I don't know. Based on like two decent games, yeah. He's had he's had two decent games. Is that enough to get him into a World Cup playoff team? I don't think so, but looking at the squad that Steve Clark did select, you could maybe argue there was room for some other outfield players. Uh, we'll start with the goalkeepers. Makes no sense to me. He's picked four goalkeepers when the number one spot isn't even up for grabs. I mean, I could understand if we had four keepers that were like, not yet. I can't even. I can't understand four keepers, right? I, I honestly, I don't. But I mean, it's not like this number one spot is up for grabs. It's not like it's debatable who's going to start. It's Craig Gordon, right? If Craig Gordon's fit. Craig Gordon plays. It's as simple as that. Clark's went with his namesake, Sander Clark, Craig Gordon, Liam Kelly, and David Marshall, who has just signed a deal with Hibs, by the way. And I think that's a decent signing for Hibs. I mean, I think David Marshall has passed his best, and he did make a few mistakes for Scotland in the last couple of games that he played. But I'm not going to sit here and say that David Marshall's a terrible goalkeeper, because he's not. I think that's a good signing for Hibs. But I mean, out of these four keepers, Craig Gordon is, is the one that's going to play. I mean, I would have probably left Marshall out. I'd have went with Gordon, Clark, and maybe Liam Kelly, or John McLaughlin. I mean, I think you could have picked either way, but I think four is overkill. I don't think four was needed, but for some reason, Steve Clark thinks four was needed. So I'll be interested to see uh, what, who he picks and what happens with the, the rest of them. But I mean, I just don't know why he's picked four, if I'm being completely honest. We move on to the centre-backs. He's went with Liam Cooper, Grant Hanley. Jack Henry, Scott McKenna, John Souter. So five centre-back options there. Uh, he does play three at the back. Normally Tierney would fit into the left-hand side of that back three. But with Tierney being out, it means there's an extra spot for somebody in the uh, in the centre-back position. So, I mean, I think he will personally... I mean, Scott McKenna has been playing pretty well recently at Forest. And obviously John Souter's had a standout season. Just got his Scotland debut goal. Uh, in his last match or the match before that even. So yeah, no, Souter's been playing well, McKenna's playing well. I wouldn't be surprised if the lineup is Hanley, McKenna and Souter. I think that could be the three that he goes with. Um, maybe Hanley down, I don't know, Hanley down the middle perhaps. Souter on the right, McKenna on the left. It could be how he lines up. We'll have to wait and see. But I'd be surprised if... I mean, that's how I would line up. I mean, fuck knows how Steve Clark's going to line up. But out of the five, that's who I would have picked. A bit disappointed that there's not a space for Craig Halkett. I'm not just saying this from a heartspan uh, perspective, but I think Craig Halkett has improved. I mean, he's always been a good defender, but I think this season he's come on leaps and bounds. And while he's not on the level of uh, John Souter, I think he could have got a call-up. I mean, he did get called up to the last squad, but he didn't feature. Didn't even get a minute. So, I mean, that was disappointing. We'll see. We'll see. Moving on to the right backs, he's went with Stephen O'Donnell, Nathan Patterson, and Anthony Ralston. So, that's the three right backs that he has chosen. Is there anybody else that he could have went with? I mean, maybe Calvin Ramsey, but I mean, Calvin Ramsey, I don't think he's tested at this level. I mean, there is talks of Calvin Ramsey going for a big money move to Liverpool. So, I mean, maybe if Liverpool want him so badly, maybe he should be in this squad. But I don't think you can have any complaints. Anthony Ralston's probably had his best season of his career. Um, we all know Nathan Parson seems to be the number one choice now. Got a big money move to Everton. Although the fact he hasn't been playing for Everton, I thought could come back to bite him in the ass. And Stevie O'Donnell, 
I mean, we all know Stevie O'Donnell, Steve Clark's most trusted player, it seems. And uh, I'm surprised no clubs are coming in for £20 million bids for Stephen O'Donnell, to be honest. When's Stevie O'Donnell getting £25-30 million contract on the table? But yeah, that, that's the three he's went with. I mean, I like O'Donnell. I would probably go O'Donnell, but I know everyone out there is probably saying it's going to be Parton or Ralston. We'll see. As for the left-back, he's went with Robertson, Greg Taylor and Aaron Hickey. <laughs> I... I I don't get the Greg Taylor selection, I really don't. To me, Greg Taylor has not been good this year. Anytime I've seen Greg Taylor in big games, he, he stands out like a sore thumb. He's always the, the weakest link for Celtic. So, yeah, no, I don't think Greg Taylor should have been in the squad. Again, not just picking an all hearts player, but I think Stephen Kingsley can consider himself unlucky not to get a call up. I mean, we've seen some of the goals he scores, free kick specialist. It would it's, be a good option to have. Not that I think Stephen King should start, but let's be real, Greg Taylor won't be starting either. I mean, that's obviously Andy Robertson's position, and if Andy Robertson, for some reason, is not playing, you would have to assume that Aaron Hickey is going to come in and start. But, I mean, Greg Taylor, I don't get it. We've seen what Greg Taylor can do. Why not give somebody else a chance? I mean, we've seen Greg Taylor, we've seen what he's capable of, and it's not very much, so I don't really agree with that. Moving on then to the midfield. He's went with Stuart Armstrong, Lewis Ferguson... Billy Gilmore, Ryan Jack, John McGinn, Callum McGregor, Scott McTomney, and David Turnbull. I mean, Stuart Armstrong, I don't like it, but I've almost come to accept it, that Stuart Armstrong is always going to be a part of the Scotland squad. As much as I don't think he deserves to be in it, I'll never forgive him for costing us that game against England. And, I mean, not just that, he's been shite in a lot of games. Even in the Euros, he was fucking dreadful. I don't know why he was allowed on the plane. And I, I would have left him over there, to be fair. Even, well, I say I left him over there. I mean, what, I think one of the games was at Hampton, wasn't it? So, I mean, two of the games was at Hampton. So, I mean, I guess he didn't really have to get on a plane. But fuck it, you get my point, right? You get my point. The guy shouldn't have, the guy shouldn't have been a Scotland team. Uh, he's went with, I mean, Ferguson. I agree, Ferguson's a good player. I think he's been poor this year. Aberdeen's had a shocker. I mean, yeah, he's got a decent goal tally, but how many of them are penalties? I don't know. I think Lewis Ferguson could have been left out. Uh, Billy Gilmore, I agree with. I mean, Ryan Jack's been good. I agree with that. I mean, Super John McGinn has to be in there. You can't not go with McGinn. Uh, Cal Mack, Cal McGregor, I mean, been fought at Celtic Player of the Season. You, you have to have him in there. Scott McTomney, I don't think he's fucking good enough. I mean, not, not good enough for Man United. Not good enough for Scotland, if you ask me. Uh, I get why he's in there. He's in there because he plays for United, and it's as simple as that. I mean, if this guy gets regular starts at United, then he's going to be getting picked for Scotland all day long, unfortunately. That's how it works. And uh, David Turnbull, also from Celtic. So, I mean, out of the three, I, I think you've obviously you've got to have McGinn in there. I think he'll have McGregor in there. And the other one, I would personally go with Gilmore or Ryan Jack. So, but, but I mean, John McGinn's a must. John McGinn has to start. I mean, John McGinn's probably the first name on the team sheet, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's either the first name on the team sheet is either Craig Gordon or John McGinn. You know, one or the other. Um, then, uh, yeah, I would probably go with Ryan Jack and Cal McGregor. Or Billy Gilmore. I mean, it, it's two out of those three. Gilmore, Jack and McGregor. Two out of those three joins McGinn in the midfield. And then up front, the strikers, he selected Shea Adams, Jacob Brown, Ryan Christie. Lyndon Dykes and Ross Stewart. Now, don't know much much about um, Jacob Brown. I don't even think I've seen him play. I don't think I've watched any Stoke City. So, I mean, I don't know if Jacob Brown's a good player or not. But, I mean, the way we have been playing with Adams and Dykes up front, those two have been contributing pretty well to Scotland's attack lately. I I'd be surprised if Adams and Dykes don't both start up front. I think it's a no-brainer. I don't think any of them deserve dropped. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. And I think if... I think if um, Steve Clark drops one of them, then he should probably be dropped on his head because those two, in my opinion, have to start up front. There is no room, though, for the likes of Kevin Nisbet. There's no room for the likes of Lauren Shankland. And I have no issue with that. I mean, those two just haven't been good enough over the past, what, year, 18 months. They've had their chance in the Scotland squad, albeit not had much game time, but they have been selected in the past and they've done absolutely nothing with the opportunity. So I don't think they can complain too much about not getting back in but I'm just glad gone are the days of like Ollie McBurney and fucking Chris Martin you know those days were fucking those were hard watches so I'm glad they're gone but I mean overall I don't think the Scotland squad's that bad 
But I, I would have to question why is like, why has he decided to go with four goalkeepers, three right backs, and, and three left backs? It seems a bit obsessive to me. I mean, you, you look at the squad in terms now. I know the formation we play doesn't really have wingers in it, right? I I, I totally get that. But you can kind of see why people think Scott Wright maybe should have got in. You know what I mean? Scott Wright, would he not have been a better option just to have, just to maybe bring on for his pace at, towards the end of games than four goalkeepers? What we, If we're trailing a match with 20 minutes to go, what are we going to do? Take the best goalkeeper on Scotland off? We're going to take off Craig Gordon and bring on Liam Kelly? What, what sense would that make? Um, goalkeepers are probably the players, the position where you're least likely to get injured as well. I mean, it's not often you see goalkeepers get injured. So four, I just don't understand why he's picked four. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Normally it's three, uh, but for some reason he has went with four. Anyway, guys, that's it. Let us know what you think down below of the squad. I mean, I, I, I don't think there's that many surprises, honestly. I mean, it's pretty much how you'd expect him to go. But for me, the, the, the big noticeable thing is he has picked four goalkeepers. Is Scott Wright unlucky to, not to be in the squad? Again, I mean, if you said Scott Wright three months ago, you would have got laughed at. If, if Steve Clark picked Scott Wright three months ago, people would have wanted Clark out. I mean, it really is that simple. So I don't think a couple of impressive games over the past couple of weeks necessarily merits a spot in a, a World Cup playoff squad. But we'll see. I definitely think there should have, could have been someone in there other than a fourth goalkeeper. So, um, yeah, that's what my thoughts on the Scotland playoff and League Nation squad. Let me know what you think down below. And I am yeah, confident going into this. I mean, it sucks not to have Tierney. It's going to be a big loss. But I still think we'll have more than enough looking at this squad. We have to be favourites to beat Ukraine and Wales. We have to be. And then in the Nations League, I believe we're taking on is it Armenia and Ireland. Should be comfortable wins in those games as well, man. Ireland are shite. Armenia aren't much worse. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. Anyway, that's it. Till next time. Peace.